All righty. We are live. Here we go. <laughs> um, hi, everybody. Welcome. We are DePaul Drake and DePaul, small to medium to large, take your pick. We are here to chat with you guys about size and location and how important that is in your college search. I am Natalie Lug. I work for DePaul University. I've been there for going on seven years now, and it is fantastic to see all of you. I recruit more majority on the West Coast, parts of the Midwest, but um, I will let my Drake and DePaul reps also introduce themselves. Megan, you're up. Awesome. Thanks, Natalie. Hi, everybody. My name is Megan Rush, and I am the admission counselor for Drake University, which you'll be hearing a bit more about uh, here. We are in Des Moines, Iowa, so I'm currently in my home office, aka bedroom, uh, working from home, um, but I cover mostly the St. Louis area and kind of the, the southern United States. So I think a few of you, if you've met me, hello. If you're new, welcome. And Sarah? Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Fink. I am the admission counselor for Missouri from DePaul University with an L. L. Um, <laughs> we are located in Chicago, Illinois, so I'll be representing all those urban or city campuses today, um, telling you a little bit about DePaul, but mainly what is it like to go to school in a large city. So happy to be able to connect with you all today and hopefully answer your questions at the end. Awesome. Well, let's get started. So um, I know I forgot to mention DePaul University, we're on the rural side. So we represent the, the small college town life uh, in Greencastle, Indiana. But um, where to start? I think one of the biggest things that all of you can really focus your efforts on when trying to figure out um, where to even begin my college search is where do you see yourself fitting in that, the next four years in terms of how big of a classroom do you want? Do you want to be a uh, big fish in a small pond uh, at institutions that are a little bit smaller? You're going to get that attention from professors. They're going to call you out and ask you to share your opinion. Um, or would you rather be in a larger lecture style classroom? So in terms of size, it's Yes, looking at the size of the institution, it, it, is it as big as your high school? Is it larger than your high school by thousands? Um, but in terms of the, the size of campus, you're also going to think about classroom size. You're going to think, think about um, uh, living situation size. So is it just in the residence halls? How big are the residence halls? Um, what can you compare your high school to in terms of that size? So is it something that you're at a bigger public high school and that was your, your jam, you loved it so much, and if you go to the school the exact same size, you aren't going to fit in, you want something bigger, you want something different. A lot of different things um, will come into terms when you are thinking about size. So I would really focus on those pieces when you're first starting out, but, um, that will also determine then how many people are within your major once you declare your academic major. Um, as you go through classroom size at a smaller institution like DePauw, your classes are going to get even smaller and smaller and smaller. So that's also something to think about and to talk to your admission counselor about as well when you are thinking about what is the perfect size, perfect fit for you for a college or university. Awesome. So I'm taking over that next one. So total enrollment versus average class size. Natalie touched on this a bit, um, but it's important to think about how many students are going to be at my university? How big are my classes going to be? You'll hear, like I, uh, we said, from three very different size universities. So that will help kind of help form your opinion of what you're looking for and, and what feels comfortable to you. Uh, some majors are obviously going to be more popular than others. So that's something to look at too, you know, how many people are going to be in my major, what does that kind of look like? As for location, you know, is at where you're currently living a good indicator of the type of environment that you want to be in? Um, this is a great time after high school to try something new if you are ready to get out of your high school town out of St. Louis. If you're comfortable there, great. Um, maybe there's, you know, a city like Chicago or um, you know, Bloomington, Indiana, where the size is a bit equivalent, um, but it's just a different scenery. So think about that as you're going through the college search too. It's really important that um, you focus on the college, but also, you know, where are you location-wise? Are you in the Midwest? Are you on the West Coast? Uh, those, are, those are some very important things because you're going to be there for four years and 
doing more than academics, you're going to be exploring, you know, where you're living, um, getting to know the community. Yeah, and that kind of brings me to what I wanted to discuss when trying to think about location is that could changing your current location how does it advantage you and how does it disadvantage you? So could moving to the other side of the country open you up to new experiences, new people, new ways of life? Is that something you're looking for in a college? Um, but also how could it disadvantage you? You know, thinking about distance from home, you know, do you want to be, especially nowadays, is it important for you to be close to home? Um, is it important for you to be within driving distance or within a short flight away or a train ride? Um, I think those are all things that are important to consider especially as your um, some of you may be seniors um, and starting to narrow down that college list um, just some other factors to consider in state versus out of state you know we all come from private universities so for us tuition is the same um, but thinking about you know how many students from the state that the college is located in go there is it important to you to go to a college that has a large out of state population so that you can get to know people um, from other states or would you prefer to stay in state um, and go somewhere with people that are more familiar to you you know everyone's college college exploration is different and is very unique to you so we're just here today to provide you with some um, some things to consider about size and location as you're trying to make that decision All right, so switching gears a little bit, um, talking more along the lines of a smaller institution. What does that mean for DePaul? Just to kind of give you guys a brief outline of who we are. We represent a little under actually 2000 students, all undergraduate. We have no graduate programs on campus. Everybody achieves a Bachelor of Art, um, but we also have a school of music. So we do have opportunities for students to achieve degrees in bachelors of music, whether that's music education, music performance, as well as just our general musical art uh, opportunities. You might want to start thinking in terms of size and location, um, how many people might be on your sports team if you're looking to join varsity athletics for a D3 institution. Um, and we have about 46 different majors, 52 different minors to choose from as well. So. The bigger the school, the more um, academic majors you might see. We like to keep it plain and simple with our majors and minors, but that doesn't mean that you also couldn't branch out with those particular academic departments, with research, with internships, with study abroad opportunities. Um, a few different things that make us uh, a little unique that help us stand out a little bit for students is our off-campus opportunities. So being able to go abroad, do a paid internship, do research for a full semester, or if you're not, not quite ready for that, or if you don't have time for that, you could do one of our winter term or May term opportunities, which is just one to three weeks where you have any of those options available to you as well. Uh, but for those students who want to raise the bar a little bit higher, you could also check out some of our honors and fellows programs. Those are perfect for students who are already pushing themselves uh, in high school with AP, IB honors courses, taking classes at the local community college nearby. Um, but these honors and fellows programs take uh, liberal arts and your career pathway to the next level. So kind of going on the faster track in that regard, um, which helps me jump in to the idea of what it's like to be in a smaller uh, at a smaller institution. So a lot of schools like us, college, uh, private liberal arts institutions, um, it might seem like we're in the middle of nowhere, but we definitely like to view it more on the optimistic glass half full side of things, being in the middle of everywhere. Greencastle, Indiana is just a three and a half hour drive from, yes, St. Louis, but also Chicago north of us, um, Columbus, Ohio, just east of us, Nashville, Tennessee, um, are other places that our students will get involved with internships, research, um, and graduate school programs actually as well. So. Think about in terms of location and size, um, are you okay being in a place that, yes, might feel like the middle of nowhere, but you also get to go off campus for so many different opportunities um, as being a part of a place that's in the middle of everywhere as well. I kind of view it as someone like Dorothy. Um, there's no place like home as well. So in that regard, your four years are going to be the best four years of your life, no matter where you end up in a bigger, a smaller or a medium sized institution. But look at the different pros and cons and what are those pros and cons that can make you the most successful um, as a student, but also in your professional career. So yes, you're gonna be a big fish in a small pond. I know I mentioned that when you're in the classroom um, with your academic advisors, but also maybe in the clubs and organizations that you're going to be a part of. 
Um, there are so many different opportunities on campus as well as off campus that will help lead you with your career path, whether it's leadership experience, service experience, anything that can help build and support your resume. Um, but also some smaller institutions require that you live on campus all four years. We are one of those institutions. You're not just in a residence hall, you're also in suites, apartment style living options. Um, you can be a part of our Greek system and choose to live in a fraternity or sorority. But that tight knit community will open a lot more doors with networking as well, whether it's with professors, other faculty and staff on campus or alumni who are across the nation and across the world wanting to stick their necks out for you to help you get your foot in the door with whatever career path that you want to go down. Um, but some students might come to an institution like DePaul that is a little bit smaller and feel a little more isolated. It might be a little bit harder in those first three months really trying to figure out um, what makes it a home away from home for you. What are things that you really want to get involved in? Um, you have a lot of support systems with that though in that regard too, whether it's your academic advisor, an upperclassman mentor. So um, those different pieces, I think you could also flip to being a pro at a smaller institution. But um, the other thing is, since we're smaller, we might be in the middle of everywhere. We're also bringing so many different, different resources to you. I know Paul and Drake do the exact same thing for their students being in bigger cities. For us, we might have to work a little bit harder to bring bigger lectures um, or musicians to perform. But in, the, in another way, in another light, you could also view it as we're bringing the world to you throughout all of these different resources, but we also want to send you out into the world to experience these opportunities so that you can find that perfect fit wherever you want to go with your academic and educational career path, um, as well as your professional pathway as well. So some different things to think about um, as you guys move forward with your college search, looking at large, small, and medium-sized institutions. Awesome. Thanks, Natalie. I am going to talk about um, the middle kind of portion, uh, Drake University. You can look at us as either a small, medium-sized school or a large, small school, however you want to take it. Um, we are about 3,000 undergrad students and 5,000 with undergrad or with graduate students. So we do have graduate programs that uh, some students take on to pursue after undergraduate and graduating with a bachelor's. We have over 100 plus majors at Drake. Uh, so being a medium-sized institution, uh, you're going to see a, a bit more variety. Um, class sizes are gonna stay small though. So that's the advantage of, of being private of that liberal arts education. We're looking um, for you to explore and, and you get started in your major right away, which is something to think about when looking at colleges. Are you taking two years of general education classes? Are you able to get into your major from day one? We have a, over 140 student organizations. I am not exaggerating. We had Hammock Club uh, come about last year. So it's pretty easy to create your own organization if you don't find anything enticing on there, but I'm assuming you probably will. Drake students like to be involved. It's a great way to get to meet people, gain leadership positions, uh, and just have fun. Um, so there's everything from professional organizations to social organizations. We do have Greek life on campus as well, um, affiliated with our National Panhellenic Association. We're division one in athletics, which is something unique for a school of our size being as small as we are. Um, we are um, division one in everything except football. We're in the Missouri Pioneer League for football, uh, but our basketball teams, our women's team just won their conference, our men's team almost went to the March Madness last year. They actually played in St. Louis and I hooked a couple of prospective students up with tickets. So that was really a neat opportunity. Uh, nearly 70% of our students come from outside the state. I think there's a, a preconceived notion that if you're going out of state, you're gonna be with a lot of people from that state. That's not the case at all. Most people are the only ones from their high school to come to Drake, uh, which means that everyone kind of is in the same playing field, right? Everyone's a little awkward together. And uh, our, I would assume with DePaul and DePaul as well, you know, we're all going to have icebreakers, um, things to help you get to meet people. So I don't think that's something to worry about. Um, all colleges have really great programs at getting acclimated to campus. And then the 10 to 1 student faculty ratio, uh, we like to keep classes small, an average class is about 20 students. 
important questions to ask are, you know, do professors teach everything or are there teaching assistants? So at Drake, professors teach everything. That means we don't have any grad assistants coming in and lecturing you in a class. Professors are there. Everything's discussion based. You know, you're going to have to do your homework, but hopefully if you're choosing to pursue higher education, you want to be there. So it's a pretty academically driven environment. Some highlights of Drake, some fun things, um, is our live mascot program. So this photo that I put on here is our original Griff. He's on the right and then Griff 2. Actually, no, Griff is on the left, my apologies, and Griff 2 is on the right. So we just, um, Griff 1 retired and his brother Griff 2 came into play. Uh, and he's around campus to take photos, um, pet, you know, it's kind of nice. He's like everyone's pet, you know, if you're missing your pet from home. So he's on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Highly recommend a follow, if not creep it on him, he's public. He'll make a smile, um, put a smile on your face. We're located in Des Moines, which is the capital of Iowa. When I'm down in St. Louis and talking about uh, Des Moines, first off, a lot of you asking where Des Moines is. Um, and once I tell them Iowa, it, there's some interesting looks. Um, that was my impression. I actually graduated from Drake in 2018. I come from the Chicago suburbs and I didn't really know about Des Moines before coming to Drake. You know, I think the Midwest notion is that it's cornfields, um, but we're much more than cornfields. And I think Natalie and Sarah can both agree uh, there's advantages to all types of different um, areas and environments. Being in the capital of Iowa, we are the center of a lot of um, Iowa caucuses, Iowa caucuses, so politics. Um, we have tons of internship opportunities, things like that. Um, you might hear the terms J term and May term thrown around. So J term stands for January term. May term is obviously the May term. Uh, these are three week accelerated classes that students are able to take a drink. If you just want to take some extra credits or have some extra room in your schedule um, since our winter break and our summer breaks are fairly long. And then the Drake Relays is a really cool track and field event. And I ask you to bear with me for a minute because when I first heard about this, I was kind of like, okay, people are running around a track. Like, how fun can that be? But it's actually a lot of fun. Um, we host the Drake Relays every April and high school athletes from around Iowa come colleges from across the country, and then even Olympians come and run. Uh, we call it the Blue Oval. It's our track at Drake. Students get in for free. So you're watching these Olympians compete. I've watched the world record for the mile be broken several times. It's a huge uh, kickoff to just a celebration. Alums come back. It's our homecoming, basically, and it starts with a huge paint fight for students. So it's a fun week on campus. If you happen to talk to a Drake alum, ask them their favorite Relays memory, because everyone has one. Natalie, I'm going to ask you to switch to the next slide, if possible. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. And just kind of going through some pros, some myths, cons, that sort of thing. Um, kind of like Natalie talked about, you know, it's a small, Drake is a smaller school, right? So you're going to have that individual attention, which students that come to Drake really like that. Um, but for some, maybe that's not what you're looking for. Maybe you like being in, um, a lecture hall of, of a couple hundred people, and that's where you thrive and how you learn. At Drake, it's much more, you know, sit down, you are interacting with the professor, they know your name, um, it's very discussion oriented. I kind of touched on the internships at Drake. Um, like I said, being in the city, we are home to some um, corporations, including Meredith Corporation, which is a publishing, one of the largest publishing firms, so think magazines like Better Homes and Gardens, um, Sports Illustrated Time. Uh, so journalism majors, English majors, even you know business majors uh, are, are getting internships there. We have a lot of ins, principal financial, as well as nationwide insurance. Um, all of our headquarters are in Des Moines. We have a saying that there are more internships than we have interns to give. So it, it, it's really nice for students coming in uh, might not be top of your mind right now to have professional experience, but definitely something to think about when you're thinking about location and environments. Des Moines is the fastest growing city in the Midwest. Picture that. So we're about 700,000 in the Des Moines metro. Growing every year, the past six years that I've been here, it's crazy to see the amount of construction and um, buildings that have gone up. It's been really cool to see uh, Des Moines just kind of 
boom. Uh, politics I mentioned, so the Iowa caucuses, uh, we are the first in the country to vote during the primaries. And it's a really, if you're interested in politics, it's a really cool way to get involved. We hosted the Democratic debate in February. Um, so I was creeping through my um, window of my office and I saw all the Democratic candidates kind of walk into the building with in their big SUV. So that was pretty cool to see. Um, so mints, you know, cons, like I kind of talked about that small school individual attention. If that's not really for you if, if you like being, um, uh, you know, a number in, in, in a sea of people and, and meeting a new person every single day, then maybe a bigger school is, is a better option for you. Iowa, you know, when, when I say the word Iowa and, and the, you know, everyone thinks of cornfields and, you know, we are, we do have those, like go 30 miles, you can find yourself some corn, but uh, we are much more than just that. And, and um, you, you got to come in and, and see it. And I, and I invite students every time, you know, everyone's really surprised, like Des Moines, who knew, you know, we did. We do have some limits to some majors, even though we are um, a medium-sized institution. You'll find that everywhere. Um, for example, architecture is one of those really big interests that we don't have. Um, engineering looks a little different at Drake, but be sure to check, you know, when you're looking at colleges that what you're interested in, they have. And I put this on here because a lot of people really ask me about baseball. Surprisingly, we do not have that as a sport at Division One at Drake. So. Unfortunately, if you're looking to play Division One baseball, Drake is probably not the place for you. But we do have the Iowa Cubs, um, and I'm a Cardinals fan, but yeah, Iowa Cubs, uh, AAA affiliate of them. So fun to check out the games. Sarah, I'll toss it to you. All right, thanks, Megan. Um, all right, so just to give you kind of a brief overview of DePaul, so you can kind of get um, a feeling for how much different it is than say like a smaller school or medium sized school like Drake and DePaul. Um, and then I'll dive into same thing, kind of, you know, pros and cons, myths about going to school in a large city. Um, so just some fast, fast facts. Um, so DePaul does have around 14,000 undergraduate students and a little over 22,000 total students. We have a pretty sizable number of graduate students I myself am a graduate student at DePaul as well as I did my undergrad there. So I'm considered what's called a double demon um, because I did both my undergrad and graduate at DePaul. We are the blue demons. So that is our mascot. Um, we also are division one athletics. We are in the Big East Conference. So that means that we compete against schools like Villanova, Georgetown, Creighton, uh, Xavier, Marquette. So Again, kind of a benefit of going to a larger school is that sometimes the people you're playing against may be a little more well, well known. Um, that is to say our, our women's basketball team is the current Big East champs. Um, our men's team tries super hard. Um, <laughs> they hardly ever win, but uh, you know, this is our year, maybe, we'll see. Um, just some popular majors at DePaul, we do have over 300 different academic programs. So again, going to a larger school in a larger city means that there are just more opportunities in terms of what you're studying. Um, these just list our top five currently. These change almost every year based off student interest, but pretty consistently we're seeing students gravitate towards film and television. We're one of the top five best programs in the country for film and television. Um, also areas like health science, accountancy, computer science, and psychology, um, but again have almost, almost anything you can think of uh, in terms of majors. Um, just additional highlights, um, our Vincentian mission, we're named after St. Vincent de Paul, the patron saint of charity, so community service is a huge part of what we do. Um, we have a, a big dedication to inclusivity, access to higher education. Um, we were one of the first uh, institutions in Illinois to admit women and people of color. So those kinds of um, mission and, and values are really rooted in who we are as a university. And I'll talk a little bit more about the Career Center in the next slide, but I really just always like to highlight that, again, there are just so many opportunities. And last year we posted over 15,000 internships for our students, and we do have over 130,000 and, and growing alumni that live in or near Chicago and they part a lot of them participate in what we call our ask program alumni sharing knowledge um, and so uh, students can gain mentorship from the alumni that are in and around the Chicagoland area 
Awesome. All right. So I think when people think of going to school in a large city, they think of just like downtown um, and in Chicago, you know, just kind of going off of that. But it's similar to, you know, New York or L.A. or Miami or wherever you're trying to look, you know, is more than just downtown. And so I always like to start out talking about that, that it's like where Chicago itself is made up of over 100 different neighborhoods um, and downtown is just one of them. So there really is more opportunities. And, you know, when I say there's access Access to everything, you know, there is. Um, Chicago has um, is home to you know over 50 Fortune 500 companies. Um, we have you know, so there's a lot of job opportunities. Um, there also is you know, we have seven major sports teams. So if you're really into sports, you can go to play. Uh, the Cubs play literally two red line stops north of our campus. Although I am also a Cardinals fan, so I you don't catch me in Wrigleyville. But um, the the White Sox also play on the red line just south of us um, so there really is just access to to everything um, you know there's things to do on the weekends I never was bored I never had to sit in a dorm room on the weekend uh, I had everything kind of at my fingertips um, to explore the city and to you know feel like I was uh, I had more things to do on the weekends and at night um, and I say both on and off campus because um, I think another kind of myth that I didn't really put on here is that, you know, students who are um, going to school in a large city don't have a campus life. Um, I guess I kind of put that under cons, you know, that it's, it's not a traditional college campus. And so sometimes students think um, because our quad isn't as big as Mizzou's quad, that campus life is different, but it really isn't. There's there's a lot going on both on and off campus. And I think just to kind of round out the pros, um, you know, really just being able to expand your horizons and meet people who are different from you um, is, is one of the most valuable things you can do in college. And so, you know, no matter what kind of location you choose, I think just looking into, um, you know, what types of students go to that university traditionally, I think is also a good indicator of, of how you'll fit in. Um, some cons, or uh, Natalie was saying how all her cons can be turned into pros. I also feel like that. I'm like, these look like cons, but I can twist it into a pro. But um, I think, you know, it's certainly just things to consider when you're thinking about going to a school in a larger city is that it can feel overwhelming at first if you're not used to that kind of environment. Um, I myself am from the Chicago, or not the Chicago suburbs, the St. Louis suburbs. Um, so I was not used to what it was like to live in a large city. And, you know, uh, I think someone else touched on this too, that it's like a lot of colleges have those kinds of resources to help you transition from high school to college. And so that can include the environment as well. Um, you know, I touched on that we don't, you know, some people think it's not a traditional college campus. Um, and I want to ask you, is that important to you? You know, is it important for you to have, um, like, if you want to be involved in Greek life, is it important for you to have houses on campus you can live in? DePaul does have Greek life, but we don't have houses. Um, so, you know, things to consider when you're considering location. Um, but again, we do have, you know, a fitness center. We do have a quad, you know, it might be kind of small, but it's there. So, you know, it's, it's just when you're thinking about those things about college that are important for you, what you want to get involved in, you know, looking at the physical campus space um, can sometimes help you, but also I don't want it to limit um, your choices as well. Um, and school spirit can look a little different. You know, we, we obviously do have division one basketball. And so I think sometimes students think, oh, if you don't have a football team, like what do students like get, you know, get excited about. And so being in Chicago, we just, we had, there's a lot more to be excited about. Um, so DePaul has its own art museum. Uh, we have a lot of different activities for students to do through our, what we call our demon discounts around the city. Um, so you can get involved in a lot around Chicago and on campus and, um, um, the school spirit does look a little different. Um, some myths, um, you know, I think people, again, going back to it being not just downtown, um, you know, people assume that the city life means it's all concrete and buildings, there's no green space, so you're just going to be kind of trapped in this concrete bubble, which is like so far from the truth. Just looking at Chicago, there's over 7,600 acres of parkland. Uh, we're located in Lincoln Park, which itself is a park, so there's a lot of green space in and around, in and around campus, and Chicago itself has over 570 individual parks. Um, going along with that, people always kind of assume going, you know, in a large city, it may be dense or, or crowded. You're kind of fighting the sidewalks for, you know, to walk down the street, but it really isn't like that. You know, um, 
unless you're go trying to shop uh, on, you know, like Magnificent Mile on like the day before, you know, Christmas, um, <laughs> you're really going to be fine um, in terms of like getting around town. Um, and again, downtown is just one of over the 100 plus neighborhoods that Chicago has. Um, and many large cities have different areas um, for, you know, specific green spaces and, and different like culture centers and things like that. So it's not just the downtown. Um, and then this one, I feel like is always important to address, you know, people, one of the biggest questions I get from folks in Missouri is, you know, they're worried about the safety of Chicago, and that's certainly extremely valid. Um, but I just, you know, I hate to point it out, but chronic Crime, unfortunately does happen everywhere um, and I think it's just important when you're looking at schools to research the specific neighborhood that your school is located in because um, saying just Chicago is unsafe is is really just unfair to Chicago and its citizens um, you know I am a Chicago resident I never felt unsafe any day that I've lived here um, and I think it's just you know a really um, really great city and has a lot of different resources and amazing people that live here. So, but it's always important for you as someone who's looking into colleges to do your own research um, and to look into the specific places that your colleges are located if you're concerned about crime. Um, and then I always like to point out every single college campus has its own public safety unit. So schools, students would not attend that school if they felt unsafe. So, and that goes for anywhere you're looking for. All right, I think that kind of does it for us. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can put it in the Q&A and we'd be happy to stick around and answer those questions. Um, and here's our contact information. So if any of you, if any of these schools stuck out to you, you wanna get more information about just college location in general, feel free to email any of us and we'd be happy to, um, to answer those questions. And thank you everybody for also sitting in on our presentation. We appreciate you all for taking some time out of your night to listen to Drake and DePaul and DePaul. So. Yes, thank you all so much. And we have that Q&A question right there. Feel free to yeah. pop something in if you'd like. Mm -hmm. Okay, doesn't look like anyone has any questions. I feel like we hit on all kind of all the different topics when it comes to size and location. Um, so yeah, if anyone has any questions, maybe we'll stick around for another like 30 seconds or so, but feel free to, to head out if you guys don't have any questions and you feel like you got enough out of this, um, this presentation. And if you wanna refer back, you know, if you wanna hear our voices again, I know this is being recorded, so um, that is something that you can share with friends or if they weren't able to catch it, uh, we would be more than happy to tell, you know, help them with anything. Feel free to pass our information along. I think I speak for everyone. Yes. Say it looks like we do have one question. Um, what is your favorite thing about your campus? And more specifically, what is your favorite thing to tell visiting students about your campus? I guess I'll... I can start. Yeah, you can start uh, off, Natalie. Yeah. I'll start with the smallest school. Um, I like to tell visiting students that even though I didn't go to DePaul University, I am super impressed with their networking. Um, I know we don't have quite as many alumni as DePaul does, but um, we, I, I wasn't kidding when I said that our, our alumni definitely stick their necks out to try and help our students as much as possible. I think that's why we can say we have about a 98% placement rate after graduation, at least within six months of graduating. Um, our alums are a huge part of those paid internships during a student's four years on campus, but also in terms of connecting to others to help you figure out where you're headed with your career. That's, that's a huge thing that I've always been super impressed with at DePaul. I can go next. Uh, there's a lot to think of. I mean, being a student at Drake, I have some unique experiences. Um, Oh shoot, the question went away. Let me grab it again. So sorry. Um, but I would say probably my favorite thing to talk about with students is internships and just professional experience. I touched on that a bit, um, but 
like I said, I had six, I had six internships as a student. They were all paid. Um, they were easy to get. And I learned so much and made so many connections. And although I'm, I'm on the higher scale, I'd say a typical student usually has two to three. Those are some great things to put on your resume, you know, maybe to find out what you don't like to do before you actually graduate and get into the real world. Um, it's kind of a great place to test things out an internship and, um, you know, wherever you end up students going to college, don't be afraid to ask your professors, advisors, career centers, you know, they're there to help you. Um, and people like interns, they really love uh, teaching students the ropes and, and learning ideas because, you know, you are kind of the next generation and, and you understand things that even I don't, you know, understand now I'm two years out, like TikTok, right? Like things like that. Um, so uh, internships, professional experience, I love bragging about that. And then Griff, you know, you can't beat a live bulldog mascot. Um, in terms of like on campus, what my favorite thing is, um, I really, um, well, one, DePaul has two campuses. So I think that's kind of unique. So we're in two different parts of the city. So I love talking about um, taking the train to class. I think that's super fun. Um, and like, I just loved being able to feel like I was, you know, a Chicago resident. I wasn't just a DePaul student. Um, and so like having that access to the city and everything is so amazing having like red line and brown line stops like right on our campus which if you all aren't super familiar with chicago those are two of the most like used train lines in the city they go all over so you just have like direct access to all of chicago and at least at DePaul, i can't speak for every urban institution um every student gets a u pass which gets you unlimited access to the chicago trains and buses so it is free to take public transit and i definitely miss it um <laughs> having to not not pay for it um so yeah so i think that's like my favorite thing is just like just having that access so so accessible Um, oh yeah, and then yeah, it looks like there's um, another question. If I guess I can, I can maybe yeah, Sarah, work our way <laughs> backward. Um, so, uh, how common is it for larger campuses to have small class sizes for certain courses and departments? Very common, um, especially if you're not in one of those top five most popular majors I listed. You could have a class of like four people, and it's totally common. So it really does like when we kind of touched on the first slide about making sure you're looking into you know like if class size is something super important to you, you know, figuring out what is the average class size for your major because something like um, accountancy, which is one of our most popular majors, you could definitely be in a lecture hall of over 100 people for, you know, your first year and then not get into your smaller school class or smaller class sizes until you're, say, like a senior, whereas something like our um, like our anthropology major, which not to knock on that, it's a great program, but it's just not super popular. Um, you know, you could have a class of like 10 people as a freshman. So it does really, really vary depending on uh, department, depending on college. Um, so yeah, definitely um, super possible. Um, and as a student, I was actually very lucky in that I never had a class that was over 40 students because um, I, I chose classes that I really liked and, um, was able to just find those that were kind of smaller. Um, so I never really had to experience a huge lecture hall. Cool. All right. Well, I think that was all the questions. All right, I guess, do you guys have anything to add to just kind of class sizes versus, um, versus like overall size? I would say, um, you know, I, Students register for their own classes in college, which may sound scary to you, you know, have, being able to pick your own classes, but know that every college has um, people there to help you out. And, you know, there might be, you'll might see capacity limits on some classes, but don't be afraid to, to reach out to professors. Um, because if they see you want to be in that class and you're committed, they're more, most likely, um, I, I can't speak for I know at Drake, but I'm, I'm sure at DePaul and DePaul as well, um, they are more than willing usually to, to let you be in the class or if a class time doesn't work and you need that class, you know, college, they, they're here to help you, right? Like colleges are here to help you. They're not here to, um, you know, make your life difficult. So uh, don't be afraid to, to reach out or, 
to professors ask those questions. I guess that would, that's what I would say about classes. I think the biggest piece of advice I have is just visit campuses. If you really have no idea where to even start, pick a large school, a small school, and a medium school, and go to their campuses, see if it feels right. I feel like maybe Sarah and Megan also can agree with this. When I stepped on a campus, I knew pretty darn quick whether it was a good fit for me or not, or just taking a campus tour. Um, I found my perfect fit over the summer when no students were on campus, which is crazy that I think is very weird. Uh, most students like to see uh, current students on campus to be able to interact and talk to them and see if, oh, am I, could I be in their shoes for the next four years? So that's the biggest piece of, I, of advice I have in general is get to campuses if you can. I know it's a little bit harder being in a pandemic, um, but some institutions are opening up. I don't know if uh, DePaul and Drake are open. DePaul is open for visits now. Are you guys also welcoming visitors back? Okay, DePaul is not, but Drake is. So you've got hopefully in the next few months, DePaul. Yeah, I was gonna say one of the one of the limitations, I should say, of being in a large city during a pandemic is that we are trying to not have as many people come into the city as possible. Um, we certainly are hoping to welcome visitors to campus um, soon, um, but it really, I mean, yeah, it's just tough to say at this point in time when that will be, unfortunately. But we have a lot of virtual options. Like, honestly, check out our website if you are interested in DePaul. There are like so many different ways to get information, to connect with current students, to view virtual tours. So yeah, definitely a lot of virtual content. We're offering limited visits. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely check out our website. Um, we just hosted our first one today and they met outside in a tent. So very fun. Nice. <laughs> All right, well, I think that um, does it. We can end a little early. I know Zoom fatigue is, well, it's only three minutes early. Zoom fatigue is real. So I'll let, you know, if, on behalf of DePaul, I just want to say thank you all for joining here today. Um, I was really glad to be able to connect with you. And um, Megan, Natalie, any kind of last thoughts? No, just thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you so much. Best of luck on the call-up search. And Enjoy your Tuesday evening, everybody. I had to yeah. double check what day it was, you know? Right. <laughs> I, know. I know. I am also working from home. So, <laughs> yeah. Also, so the days, yeah, just blend in. Mm -hmm. Have a good night, everybody. Good job, everybody. That's a wrap. It was great. I learned a lot. I was kind of eating dinner at the same time, but <laughs> it, was, it was wonderful. So. Nice. Good. Appreciate it. Yep. All right, All right guys. Well, have a good, good night. Yep. Bye. Yep. Bye.